Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the second video of a three-part mini-series where I show you how to build a simple yet very powerful text editor using Python and TKinter. If you haven't seen the first video yet, definitely go check it out because watching it will help you get the best out of everything new that we're going to discuss in this second part. As you may remember, in the first part of the video, we've created all the basic components for our text editor that we've called PyText. And so we've got a text area where we can write basically whatever we want. We've added the scroll bar here on the right side of the editor to help us navigate through the documents that we're going to use our editor with. And as you can see right here on the top of the editor, we've got a menu bar where we've implemented a file drop down menu which lets us access all sorts of different functionalities that we're going to implement here in this new video. With each new episode of this mini-series, we're going to make our text editor much more powerful, and by the end of this series, our editor is going to be capable of working with different file formats, such as, for example, HTML documents, Python and JavaScript files. It is going to have a reactive status bar on the bottom side of the window. We're going to implement keyboard shortcuts, about pop-ups, and much more. So, let's get started. So far we've created two classes, the PyText class and the menu bar class. As the name suggests, the menu bar is the class that is in charge of actually managing all the different widgets that are going to form our menu bar. And so for example we've got the file drop down button, which is in fact a sub menu of the bar, where we've defined several labels such as new file, open file and so on that we are then linking to text related methods such as for example open file that we access via parent which is the pytext class. The pytext class is a bit of the core, the controller of the whole program. It's the class where we've created the text area, the scroll bar and where we're instantiating the menu bar as well. It is important to note that the pytext class gets past a master instance which is in fact an instance of tk.tk, which as you probably remember is basically the root window, the master window in fact. And master is also the instance that we use to launch the main loop of events that make up a TK inter program. So in this second video we're going to implement all the different methods that we've defined previously in the pytext class in order to give our program all the most important functionalities that every editor should have. Before we start coding, I remember you to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this program in tutorials and if you are really passionate about coding, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because there are a lot of new videos that I'm going to upload every single week and I guarantee you are going to love them. So let's get started and the first method that we're going to implement is going to be the open file method which as the name clearly suggests allows us to open up documents to show in our text area. But before starting to write the code for open file we need to define a variable self.filename that we can initialize with none. Basically file name is going to represent the name of the file that we are currently working with. And so now in the open file method we can start to write our code. So if self.filename, so if there is something other than none associated with file name, we can then clear up the text area, then open up the file associated with the variable file name, and then insert the content of this file within the same text area. So first of all, self.textarea dot delete and you see we got two indexes which allow us to specify which part of the text area we want to clear up and then here we're going to pass 1.0 because we want to refer to the first character in the buffer and then simply tk.end so this way we're telling our program to delete everything within the text area from the beginning to the end we can now open up the file so with open self.filename and we want to open the file in read mode therefore we pass r as second parameter and we want to open the file as f. We can now insert the content of the file within this text area so self.textarea.insert and we want to start injecting the content in the beginning of the text area so 1.0 and we want to insert 
the content of the file that we can read with f.read. Okay, so far everything's perfect, however, we need to actually assign a file to self.filename because at the moment self.filename is a simple variable assigned to none. So the question is, how can we do to actually open up a real file that is maybe stored within a folder in our operating system? Well, the answer is that we need to make another import. So here I'm going to import file dialog from tkinter. From tkinter, import file dialog. So file dialog is really cool because it provides us an explorer that we can use to actually navigate through the files and folders within our system. And we can use it like so. Within our open file method, I'm going to reassign self.filename and to self.filename, I'm now going to assign file dialog dot ask open file name because it allows us to select a specific file within our system and then it returns us its name. And there are two parameters that we want to pass to ask open file name. First of all, a default extension. So default extension. And by default, we can set txt. But because text documents are not going to be the only files that we might want to open, we can actually pass file types, which is going to contain a list of possible file extensions to help us navigate within our system. Precisely, it is going to be a list of tuples, and each tuple is composed of two parts. First of all, a verbose name, such as, for example, all files, and then an extension. And so in the case of all files, it's going to be an asterisk, a dot, and another asterisk. Then we might want to select only text files. So I can write text files with extension clearly dot txt. Then maybe only Python scripts. So dot py Python scripts. Then maybe markdown documents. So mark down documents dot md, then maybe js, JavaScript files, and then HTML documents and CSS documents. So HTML, CSS, and here HTML documents and here CSS documents. We can then close the parentheses like so. Perfect. So it's finally time to test the new code we've just written. I'm going to restart the script. So let's go to file, open file and perfect. Here it is. This is our file explorer. And we can now select, for example, the source code of our editor, open, and here it is, all the code that we've written so far. Perfect. There is, however, another thing that we can do because you see, the title of a window has clearly remained the same. And therefore, we need to develop a way to change the window's name accordingly to the file that we're currently browsing. So let's go back to our code. And here, let's now think about developing the set window title method. So first of all, we're going to pass another parameter, name, which we can initialize to none, because there are going to be two possible scenarios where we might want to call the set window title method. First of all, for example, within the open file method, we might want to call the set window title passing a name to it, like for example, the name of a file that we are just opening. And in that case, clearly we want to use that name passed as parameter to actually change the name of a window. But there are also other cases where we just want to set the title as neutral, for example, untitled by text. For example, when creating a new file, which doesn't have a name yet. And in that case, we just want the window to be called untitled. So if name, we can call self dot 
master the title and we can pass name plus by text else self dot master dot title and we are just going to pass untitled by text like so now from within the open file method we can call self dot set window title so self dot set window title and we're going to pass self dot file name so let's try this out i'm going to restart our script let's open up the file once again by text and here it is awesome as you can see the title of the window has changed and it now shows path plus name of the file plus by text perfect let's now write the code for the new file method so that we can also test the second scenario and new file is actually pretty easy to implement first of all we want to delete the content of the text area like so then we want to reassign none to file name so self dot file name equals none and then we just want to call self dot set window title but this time we are not going to pass any name so that the title of a window can just be set to untitled pytext. Let's try it out. I'm going to save and restart our script. So first of all, I'm going to open up a file and then file, new file. Awesome. The title of the window is now untitled pytext and as you can see, the text area has been cleared. Perfect. There are now two more methods that we need to implement the save and save as methods, which are very important. The save as method is basically the method which allows us to concretely create new files. Because basically the purpose of save as is to take all the content of the text area and then write that content within a new file while at the same time also assigning a name to this new file. So basically the new file method allows us to set up the text area so that we can then actually create a new file with save as. And considering that this time we want to actually create a new file within our system, we are going to put our code within try and accept clauses, just to manage any exception that might occur. So first of all, try, I'm going to use pass for now, accept, exception, as e, and in that case we are just going to print the exception. Most of the time, however, everything is going to be just fine, so let's write the code for the try clause. First of all, we're going to define a new variable, new file, and to new file, we're going to assign another method of the file dialog class that we've imported right here. And this time, the method is going to be ask save as file name which similarly to what we get using the ask open file name this time it allows us to select a location within our system and a name for a new file that we want to create so the parameters are going to be very similar to the one that we've passed to ask open file name as a matter of fact two of them are going to be exactly the same but this time first of all we want to pass the initial file parameter so initial file equals and we can just call it untitled.txt so initial file is simply going to be the initial name given to the file if we don't specify anything otherwise we can now get the content from the text area that we want to write to our file so text area content equals self dot text area dot get from the beginning to the end and now we can actually open up the file in write mode so with open new file w write mode as f and here we can call f dot write passing it text area content then once the file has been created we can reassign self dot file name equals new file 
and now once again we can call self dot set window title passing it self dot file name perfect so let's try this out i'm going to restart the script so let's write something for example this is really cool and file save as the explorer pops up we got the opportunity to actually navigate through the existing files using this drop down menu and we can now select a name for the file like for example a generic first document.txt save and first of all we see that now the window title has changed and if we go and have a look using visual studio codes explorer we now see that we got our first document perfect so we now need to write the save method which is going to be in charge of saving new documents and because of that we want first of all to check if self.filename is assigned to something other than none in that case we're going to save our file otherwise else we're just going to call self.saveas so that even if our users press the save button instead of save as on a newly created file, they will nevertheless be able to actually create a new file. So here, once again, we're going to use try and accept clauses. So accept exception as e, print e. And here, first of all, we're going to get all the content of the text area. And then here simply with open self dot file name in write mode as f and then f dot write text area content so it's finally time to test the save method as well so let's run a script and i'm now going to open up first document dot and let's add some more so i'm now going to click save and then new file open file first document and as you can see all the new content has in fact been saved really really cool okay developers that was it for this tutorial thank you so much for reaching the end of the video remember to press the like button if you enjoyed the video and if you have enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already it's the only way we can grow this channel fast together and publish always more and fresh content see you in the next video the third and final episode of this mini series where we are going to create the status bar for our program we are going to implement keyboard shortcuts the about pop-ups and much more until then stay awesome and happy coding